Okay, this is the first lesson of chapter 6, okay, of the chapter on quadratic equations. It's section 6.1, and we're going to learn the method of the completing the square. Okay, I'm going to try and go through in this um, lesson, I'm going to go through the explanation of how completing the square works, so the rationale behind it and the rationale behind why what we're doing for this method. Okay, I'll put out uh, another lesson that goes through um, just more um, to the point how we go through the steps of completing the square. This one's more about explanations. Okay, I'm going to try and keep it. Um, I'm going to try and keep the video fairly short. Okay, so if you have to pause it and rewind it, feel free to do that. Okay, so the whole goal of completing the square is to go from standard form, okay, of a quadratic equation and get it into factored form. Okay, the reason, or sorry, from standard form to vertex form. This is vertex form, not factored form. This is vertex form. Okay, the whole goal from standard to vertex form. Why we want it in vertex form is so that we can find max and min values. Remember, vertex form is useful because we can pick out our vertex from it. Our vertex is h, k. Okay, h, k. Okay, that's why we want vertex form. We can pick out our vertex, and we know that the vertex is the maximum or minimum point on the parabola, um, depending on the direction of opening. The parabola opens up. It's got a minimum point. If it opens down, it's got a maximum point. Okay, let's move on. So, once again, our goal of this lesson, to go from standard to vertex, okay? And we're going to do one example in this lesson where the A value is 1, okay? I'll put another video out where the A value is not 1, and like I said, in that one, I'm not going to go through as much of an explanation as to why we're doing what we're doing. This is the video that will help you understand that, okay? So, before we can do completing the square, we have to make sure we understand what a perfect square trinomial is. Okay, these, this is a perfect square trinomial right here. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is another one. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Why these are useful is because the factored form of these perfect square trinomials is a binomial squared. Okay, and you'll notice this binomial squared looks just like this in vertex form, that binomial squared right here. Okay, right here. So, if we can get a perfect square, tri perfect square trinomial, okay, we can factor it into a binomial squared, and that looks just like vertex form. So we can see why this is going to be useful. Let me just quickly go through um, just a very quick proof of these again. I'll just do the first one, very quick proof, so we can see what happens. So if I have a plus b squared, I know that's the same as a plus b times a plus b. Okay. Now if I expand this using FOIL, okay, first terms, outside terms, inside, last, I get a squared plus ab plus ba. I can write that as ab though, because the order of multiplication doesn't matter. 5 times 2 is the same as 2 times 5, and b times b, b squared. Okay. What's really important about this is I notice when I expand um, a binomial that has been squared, what I get is it is this product twice. Okay, I get the product of the two terms in the binomial. I get that twice. I get them added together, so they're I get that double. Okay, so I have an a squared plus an ab plus another ab. So I have plus two of these ab's. So I have double a times b. Okay, that's always going to happen. That's the main pattern that is important for perfect square trinomials. Okay, the middle is always going to be double the product of the two terms inside the original binomial. Always double. That's the pattern. This is very, very important that we understand this pattern occurs. Okay, this is very important for the method of completing the square. If I go through and expand a minus b squared using FOIL, I would get this. The only difference being that I have a minus sign in my perfect square trinomial compared to this one where I have a plus. Because in my binomial I have a minus here. Okay? Okay. Now that we know um, what a perfect square trinomial is, right here, and what its factor looks like, right here, our factor is a plus b squared. Okay? 
Let's just look at a couple of them and just see what they look like because we have to be able to factor these. We have to be able to create them and factor them actually. Okay, so let's just look at these, factor these. x squared plus 18x plus 81. If I didn't know the pattern of a perfect square trinomial, I would have to factor this by finding two numbers that have a product of 81, a sum of 18. I'd know those two numbers are 9 and 9. Okay, so my answer would be x plus 9 times x plus 9. And I could rewrite that as x plus 9 squared. Okay. Or I can notice this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay. I have a number at the beginning that is being squared. Okay. So my a squared value is x squared. That means my a is x. And I have a number at the end that looks like that's a perfect square as well, 81. I know 81, the square root of 81 is 9. So this is in fact a perfect square number. So my b value, okay, if b squared is 81, my b value is the square root of 81, which is 9. So my b value is 9. So this is actually an x squared plus an 18x plus a 9 squared, okay? So my middle term should be 2 times a times b, which it is. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 times x is 18x. So this is a perfect square trinomial. So my answer is just a plus b squared, which is x plus 9 squared. And I'll look at this next one here. This one has a minus. That's the only difference. So we're going to be using this rule this time instead of the top one. Okay. So you'll notice at the beginning, I have a number squared. I have an x squared. Okay. It's always going to be an x squared for when we're using the completing the square method. So our a value is always going to be x. Okay. Because our a value is the square root of what we see here. Because what we see here is a squared. a squared is x squared equals x squared. And a equals x. Our b squared value is 36. That means our b value is the square root of 36, which is 6. Okay? So I notice that this is a perfect square value. Okay? This is actually a 6 squared. So I have x squared minus 12x plus 6 squared. So my a and b values are x and 6. The middle term is double the product of these. Okay? 2 times 6 is 12, times x is 12x. Okay, so this is a perfect square trinomial in this form. So my answer is a minus b squared, so it's x minus 6 squared. What I really want us to notice is trying to discover the relationship between this middle term here and the end term, between the b in standard form and the c. Okay, This is standard form. I really want us to see the relationship between the b and the c. Okay. So I know in the middle here, I always have numbers that have been doubled. Okay, I have 2 times a times b. So these a and b have been doubled. Okay, and at the end here, I have a b squared value. Okay, I have a number that's squared. So to see the relationship between these two numbers, what I see here, 18 and 81, I know what I see here has been doubled. Okay, so if I want to get to this number here, if I want to get to the b squared, and I know in the middle here I have a b that has been doubled, I have to divide it by 2 to, re to reverse that doubling that happened. So I have to divide it by 2. That gives me 9. Okay. So now I have the b value that I started with before it was doubled. And then to get to the last term, I know the last term is b squared. So I have to square that number that I just um, undoubled or divided by 2. Okay. So I have to square that 9. That gets me the 81. Okay. Because of... Um, this rule here that we determined, we were able to see that relationship. We know the middle term has always been doubled, so we divide it. We undo that doubling by dividing it by 2. That gets us to the 9. And then we know the last term is always squared. So to get it to that last term, we have to square that 9. Okay, let's look at that, that relationship for here. If we want to get from 12 to 36, what we have to do is undo that doubling. So that occurred. Okay, this doubling occurred. Undo it by dividing by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then we have we then have to square it to get to 36 because we know at the end we have a number squared. Okay? So that gives us 36. Okay? So that's how we got from 12, the middle term, the B term, to 36, the last term. Okay? So hopefully we see that relationship. And so here it is in words here. The last term of a perfect square trinomial, okay, the last term of a perfect square trinomial, this 81, this 36, 
is half of the middle term squared. Half of 18 is 9, squared is 81. Half of 12 is 6, squared is 36. That, that pattern will happen for all perfect square trinomials. And the factored form is x plus, okay, x plus b over 2, okay, and then that is in brackets, and it's all squared, okay. So, how we got this b over 2 term, okay, our b value, if we look, if we look at the middle here, 18, we 18x, okay, we know that the a and the b have been doubled, okay, so if I want to figure out what my b value is, Okay, I want to figure out, I know the factored form looks like a plus b squared or a minus b squared. Okay, we know our a is always going to be x. I told us it's always going to be x when we're completing the square. To figure out what this b value is going to be, we have to divide this middle term by 2 because we know it was doubled. So if we divide it by 2, 18 divided by 2 is 9, and that's what we see right there. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Well, negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6, and that's what we see right here, okay? Positive 18 divided by 2 is 9, we see a positive 9. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6, we see a negative 6, okay? So because the b has always been doubled, if we divide it by 2, that gives us our b value, and we know that the factor is always going to be an a plus b or an a minus b, okay? Squared. So the factored form is x plus b over 2 squared. So that's a nice little shortcut to being able to factor a perfect square trinomial, okay? x plus b over 2 squared. So, if we want to be able to make a perfect square trinomial, you'll see why this is useful in a minute. If we want to be able to make a perfect square trinomial, we know, okay, we have the first term and the middle term of standard form. We have the ax squared and the bx, but we don't have the c. But that's okay, because we know that the last term of a perfect square trinomial is half of the middle term squared. It's half of 2, or it's half of 6, squared, which is 3 squared, which is 9. So we just made a perfect square trinomial. We made uh, a number squared at the beginning. We made a number squared at the end. The 9 is a 3 squared, okay, that's, so that is there. And the middle term is 2 times x times 3, 2 times a times b, which is 6x. So we made a perfect square trinomial. What we did to make this perfect square trinomial, we added b over 2 squared. Our b value is 6. If we think about it in, in standard form, our b value is 6. We took half of that and squared it, and that gave us our c value. Okay. So you might want to watch this part again just to make sure we understand this. Okay. This is the, this is the complicated part of this. If we understand why we're able to do this to make a perfect square trinomial, we'll be well on our way to completing the square. Okay, so here are the steps to completing a square. We're going to go through one example together. 